Good afternoon, you absolutely phenomenal human beings. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for clicking that button and joining me on this beautiful day for today's video. Hope you're all well. So again, guys, it is an absolutely beautiful spring, summer's day, spring, summer's day. So again, my awesome friends, you join me on an absolutely fantabulous day today. The weather for the most part has been absolutely glorious. We've had a few splatterings of rain in the afternoon while I've been filming, but for the most part, the sun has been popping its head out and things are drying up. So I thought, guys, what better weather could we possibly want to get out and do a bit of early spring wild edible foraging? And that is exactly what we are going to do today. I brought the foraging pouch. We're going to have a rummage about in the hedgerows and on the fields. If we get lucky, maybe we'll find some early St. George Day mushrooms and uh, some nice choice greens in the hedgerows. If we do, I brought some cooking gear. We're going to cook all that up with a nice egg and bacon omelettes. Sound good? Stick around, let's find out. And just like that, ladies and gents, we have found our first wild edible. But before I continue with the video, I would just like to say I will not be using any scientific classification names for the plants today in this video. I personally don't believe it helps you identify the plant any easier and it just takes up precious room in the brain box. So we'll leave the scientific classificationalism to the professional um, school foragers because that is their bread and butter at the end of the day. And in this video, I will just be giving you the common names that I know these plants by. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the first wild edible. So what we have here guys is the sweet Sicily and sweet Sicily is part of the umbelliferae or carrot family. And it is to be known that the carrot family is home to some of the most toxic and deadly plants here in the UK, namely the hemlock water dropwort and the deadly hemlock. So this plant is relatively easy to identify and it is quite prolific. You can find this in hedgerows alongside pretty much anywhere. But the way we identify this plant is the very suspicious white stains, which can see speckled all over the leaves. I'll bring one closer to the camera soon. Um, but they look like tipex stains or if you not sound of mind, could be uh, confused for something else. But the plant is um, heavily haniseed in flavour. Uh, most parts or all parts of the plant are edible. The leaves, are, the leaves stem um, are edible in the spring and in the summer you've got the root, the seed pods and the flowers. Again this is more of a pot herb than an edible but in the past the stems have been candied uh, to turn into sweets. But the plant is edible again. Um, and again, straight away, you put that in your mouth, heavily, heavily, and a seed flavour. Nice little um, wayside herb. So what we have here, ladies and gents, is a very, very common wild edible indeed. In fact, this is called common sorrel. And this is probably one of the first wild edibles you will learn about when you're exploring the world of bushcraft and foraging. So the common sorrel is again, very common, very prolific. You will find it in this sort of setting. Along country roads, anywhere there's moss, grass, um, in the hedgerows, you will find common sorrel. Now, again, it's a very easily identifiable plant. The only one you could possibly mistake this for is um, Lords and Ladies Cuckoo Pints. The young leaves of the Lords and Ladies Cuckoo Pints do look similar, although the common sorrel on the ends of the leaves, I'll bring that closer in a second, have arrows like sharp edges, and on the Lords and Ladies plant, they are round lobes on the bottom of the leaf. Taste of the plant is very, very lemony. Knowing my look, a dog has passed here and urinated all over this plant, but you know, he who dares wins. Now that is a very, very acidic lemony taste. Um, and that will go lovely with the aniseed from the Sweet Sicily. The whole plant is edible, although you only would take a few leaves. Same as any plant you're foraging, don't take everything, just take what you need. A few leaves here and there. Um, but yeah, common sorrel. Now then, ladies and gents, the next wild edible on the menu is the morning primrose. Uh, the morning primrose is a pretty common wild edible. Again, you'll probably see this sometimes sprouting up in your garden with its yellow or green leaves and it's basil cabbage-like, crinkle cabbage-like leaves. The edible parts of this plant are the petals from the flowers, or the full flower. The leaves are also edible. Um, people do say they taste hot and spicy. I don't get that at all when I try these. I get a numbing of the mouth and the taste of wet cardboard. Well, your palate may differ. But again, the flowers are mildly sweet. This one is suspiciously close to a 
pretty new dog turd just on the right of us there so I am going to be cautious with this one but the flowers can be eaten raw like so and they do indeed taste mildly sweet I'm not going to try the leaves again because I know exactly what they're going to do for So me. you can get a close up of the flower itself and you can see we have five pale yellow petals and a dark yellow insert and also if we take a closer look at the leaves they do look like a crinkly cabbage is it a savoy cabbage smell like that this is best used just as a wayside nibble as you as you're passing it um, again don't take too much just the odd flower now guys and girls this plant i'm sure needs no introduction this is one of the most common and prolific weeds in the world this is the humble dandelion or lion's tooth or pisser bed as it was known in the medieval periods now usually when we're foraging wild foods anything that secretes a white sticky sap when it's damaged or broken is a big no-no the dandelion is an exception to that rule and the plant in its entirety is edible if we take the stalk and we squeeze some of that white sap out you can see there um, again this plant is fully edible not very nice um, people eat these for fun I've tried them in the past and the taste isn't in favour of my palate so I'll leave them alone the leaves are quite bitter um, some people do store these in a dark room or a dark bag um, and let them go yellow and they're a bit more palatable but this is packed with nutrients uh, minerals vitamin absolutely powerhouse of a medicinal as well as edible so one to know the roots of the dandelion plant can be dug up and used as a substitute coffee although there's no caffeine in that so what's the point also you will need the landowner's permission to unearth any plant from any ground now now then this is another lovely little wild edible to find in the woodland guys and this is wild pink purslane now then purslane does contain high amounts of saponins so we don't want to eat too much of that and i think the only one you could possibly mistake this for are the young leaves from the campion as you can see there they do have a small amount of similarity difference being with the leaves from the purslane are they are glossy to start with and they are very succulent and thick but um, the leaves are edible raw and they do have a taste of uh, beetroot believe it or not they are very nice as part of a salad so we'll take one or two of these for garnish you can see there one of the flowers just starting to emerge We'll leave that to carry on the growth. This one here guys is very very widespread and again very common and prolific and probably needs as much introduction as the pulp. This one here ladies and gents is wild garlic or ramsons. With this edible guys you'll probably smell this before you see it but when you do see it you'll see it carpets an absolutely humongous area. Um, the full plant again is edible in its entirety from the tiny tiny wee shoots like this which are delicious to the larger leaves which obviously taste stronger and then we have the white flowers unopened or opened are my favourites and if you know where this is growing in the past you can also dig up the bulbs and they're like, like a nice crunchy onion very nice so we will be picking some of this for our dinner So here is a look at the leaf, this is a more mature leaf. The plant hasn't flowered yet, that will come later in the spring. And these are some of the little bulbs, which are also edible, and some of the smaller leaves. Delicious edible, you get it every time you see it. Now just one caution when you're picking wild garlic ladies and gents, and that is to pick each leaf individual. Reason being there are toxic plants that grow around and amongst the wild garlic such as the lily of the valley and also young leaves of the again uh, cuckoo pine or lords and ladies can be mistaken for this leaf they will not smell of garlic that is the way you can identify this when you break the leaf it is a very very pungent garlicky smell and obviously taste so here we have the last wild edible of the day ladies and gents and unfortunately we are a little bit early although this edible does grow a couple of weeks either side of spring this is a mushroom and this is the St George's Day if we move some of this leaf, leaf litter this is the St George's Day mushroom and you can see there we have a couple of the young fruiting bodies just ready to emerge 
Now the reason these are called St George's Day mushrooms, you probably guessed they do come up in the spring around the time of St George's Day. I think we might be safe just harvesting this, this one here, this seems to be the biggest of the bunch. So if we take a closer look at the cap and the stem you'll see both of them are white or off-white, a nice white tough stem and it is quite a little uh, tough mushroom. The only one you could possibly, well there's probably two that you could mistake in this for, is probably the um, deadly fibre cap which grows at the end of spring but that um, stains red when that's bruised. This is a very very nice mushroom for the plate and this will be going into my omelette today. Now there are loads more I want to show you today, um, unfortunately we don't have time, but one more example, sat right next to us on this log is the common common wood sorrel and this is a forager's favourite for a nice little nibble in the woodland and this one specifically tastes like apple peel, it likes to live in shady places the flowers are edible, as well as the leaves. And fun fact, in the shade, the actual leaves fold up like so, like an umbrella. Now, these do contain uh, a chemical called oxalic acid. And in the boat load, they can affect your kidneys, but we're talking truckloads. Even a handful of these on a daily basis for weeks on end would cause you no harm. But just so you know, they are there. We also have in the area, actually scattered all around me, um, another plant called Lesser Celandine. This grows near waterways like this stream here. And um, this is part of the buttercup family. And the buttercup is a toxic plant. Parts of this are edible. I believe the leaves are edible um, and the, the root tubers that live underground, probably the size of small onions, they can be boiled, boiled and boiled again. After a few changes of water they can be mashed up as a mashed potato substitute. So I will carry on with a series of woodland foraging ladies and gents and as spring progresses and the plants become a bit more mature you might see a change in the plants I've shown you so far. But we'll go over all new ones and uh, cook up some meals with them as well. Right guys and girls, my wild eggs and bakey are finished. So it's on to dessert. So we have my piece of sweet Sicily. My singular primrose bud, flower. And two sorrel leaves. So let's try all these together because these are classed as the desserts of the wild foraging world. And we'll take a nice young frond off that. Wrap them up into a delicious sweet parcel and pop it into the gob. Straight away you got that aniseed, that sweet lemon, citricy taste from the citricy, citrusy, citrusy taste from the sorrel. And the primrose has just got lost in all of that. Hmm. Tasty, tasty. Tasty woodland. That is a stunning bird of prey, just perched up in the tree over there. Right guys, I don't want to take all the fun out of what we've done today because I've really enjoyed being out in the woodland collecting all these wonderful, tasty, delicious, free wild edibles. 
I don't know if you can hear that. But just on a note of caution, if you do plan on coming out trying this for yourself, then please, please, please do your own research and get your hands on as much reference material as possible and then cross-reference that with many more. There are plants, although be it a few, in the UK woodlands that will not give you a second chance. And if you're picking something you can't identify and you ingest that, there's a good chance that will finish you off and you will be a ghost. Oh, two of them. No, that's a magpie chasing it. Eat it, eat it. Oh, chasing it. Oh, it's coming down, it's coming down. Is it coming through? Sorry guys, but yeah, there is a chemical compound in hemlock, um, drop wart, that I'm not sure what it is, but it causes your skin to retract on your face like this, leaving you with a horrible death grin. So just do your research and make sure you know what you're picking beforehand. Right, ladies and gents, I'm going to wrap the video up there. Thank you very much for joining me on my foraging travels today. It's been a pleasure having you. There will be many more to come, but until the next one, you stay safe and as always, stay crafty. See you again, guys. Bye-bye.